So we have our place values, which is the only reason we can uh, express a number that's greater than 9, if you think about it. Um, we have these digits that we use. Here, I'll write them in blue. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We only have those 10 digits. There are 10, aren't there? Right? Um, and without the decimal system, that's all we could write. We couldn't write anything greater than 9 could we? Even to write a 10, you have to have the decimal system because when we write a 10, everybody has to understand that there's a decimal right here and this is the ones place and we have zero ones and this is the tens place and we have one ten, right? So you guys are very used to the decimal system. When you see something like this, you understand that we have four hundreds and six tens and seven ones. Right, O? What would happen if we didn't have the decimal system? Let's say uh, we use Roman numerals instead of Hindu Arabic numerals. Uh, let's see here. Do you guys know what that is? Who knows what it is? Is it 14? No. Oh, you're getting closer. It is 26. Yeah. So it's two tens and a five and a six. And let's say I wanted, I wanted to add to that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's, let's do, uh, you know what that one is? 19? 14. It is 14. So this one is 10 and 10 and five and one, so 26. This one is 10 and then one less than five. Mm -hmm. So in Roman numerals, if you write um, a, a one before a, a value greater than it's one less than that. Um, I, get, I suppose it could also be written this way if you wanted to, right? That would be still 14. Do you notice how there's no place values though? What about adding these two things together? Is it very easy? When you when you yeah have fun with that. When you're looking at the, them this way, can you imagine trying to multiply or divide? This is not anything that anybody ever did on a piece of paper. They would never write it down and then put this one down below and like try to add them up somehow. That would never happen. Um, the only thing you do with Roman numerals is you write down the number so you can remember it later. Okay, uh, to figure out what the number is. You add it up in your head, or you use an abacus or something like that, and then you just write down the number using Roman numerals. And that's that's not how our num number system is. Our numerals, you know, we can we can add 59 if we like, and that gives us 16 ones, which is six ones and a ten. And then this gives us 12 tens, which is two tens and a 100, and then five hundreds, and it makes life a much, much better. And it's something we can do on a paper. You know, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. This was a this is a big deal for us. So I, I wanted to talk about tens with powers. So I guess you guys all understand that this one is ten to the first power. Right? Yeah? This one is ten to the second. second. This is ten to the third, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, and this has a one with six zeros, so it's 10 to the sixth. If I had a one with uh, eight zeros, which would be 10, okay, okay, 10 billion or 10, uh, 10 million, then it, it would be 10 to the eighth power. Now, what about this one? I heard it, what is that? Yeah, it's 10 to the 0 power. And it makes sense, doesn't it? When you look at it that way, it makes sense. What if I go down to the next place, which is the tenths place? Now what do I have? 10 to the what? Negative 1. Which seems really odd, but it kind of has to be that, doesn't it? And so this one is 10 to the what? 
negative 2 and 10 to the negative 3. This would be the hundredths place. I'm running out of room. And the thousandths place. So we need to be able to deal with things when we see 10 to some power. So I had it up here. Like 10 to the fifth power. Can you guys just write that as a numeral? Is that a no? <laughs> how, how can we do that? Uh, I'm going to put a 1, and you guys are going to put what after it? Five zeros. Yeah. If I had 10 to the 10th power, you'd put a 1 and 10 zeros. Pretty simple, right? What if I gave you uh, 10 to the negative 5? So, do you understand how to write this so it has a positive exponent? Yes? What do we do? 1 over, right? 10 to the positive 5. So first of all, you write it so it has a positive exponent. And then you can deal with that. That's just a 1 with, yeah, 5 zeros. 1 one hundred thousandth. You okay with that? So when you see something like this on Alex, 10 to the negative 3 power, you're going to understand how to write it as a numeral, I hope. Okay? Um, <clears throat> speaking of negative exponents, you guys are okay with this. Well, you understand we can bring the 3 up to the numerator. What does this exponent become? Positive, Positive 2 over 1. And this is 9 over 1. It kind of it kind of looks like I flipped this over a little bit, but we're, we're not doing that. We're just moving the 3 up to the numerator. and You just have to remember, it, the numerator or denominator are never blank. Sometimes we leave them blank, like we won't put anything here. We'll just say it's 9. But there's, there's a 1 there all the time. Um, I think this is kind of what concerns me. Have you had to deal with anything like that? Who's seen that before? I don't think we have. I, don't, I think this is kind of a new, a new thing. So let me just show you. 2 thirds to the negative 3 power is the same as 3 halves to the positive 3 power. What did I do? It looks like I just did the reciprocal and then it's change the exponent up here, right? Um, I'm not exactly doing that. Um, this is, this means 2 to the negative 3, and when it's in parentheses like that, it also means the denominator to the negative 3. And so if I bring the 3 up, and I take the 2 down, I end up with that, which is, which can be written this way. So it looks like I just did the reciprocal and then I raise it to the third power. One thing, but we're not really doing that. We're, we're doing each one separately and then moving them up and down separately. Um, so, uh, three to the third. Come on, you guys are sleeping today. What is it? 27, 27 and two to the third. Okay, eight. eight. So. <coughs> Uh, three fifths squared. What do you think? Is it nine over five or is it nine over twenty-five? Yeah, it's nine over twenty-five. When it's in parentheses like that, you have to be sure to square the numerator and square the denominator. Does that make sense to everybody? We're squaring both parts. It's it's literally saying three fifths multiplied by three fifths. Make sense? Okay. If I have uh, two sevenths to the negative two, can we write that so it has a positive exponent? And then we can do it. Seven squared is 49, and two squared is four. 
What do you think? Negative exponents? Not too hard to deal with, are they? You guys awake today? You're not answering questions today. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, negative exponents, they're kind of kind of a pain. Sometimes we just don't want to have a negative exponent. Can we write this so it doesn't have a negative exponent? Mm -hmm. Write the expression a different way? How? Wyatt? Over 1 over x to the third. Okay. What if this said 4 x to the negative 3? Where would the 4 go? Does it move down 2? Or does it stay up on top? Yeah, stays on top. Has nothing to do with moving the x down, okay? You can move the variables down independently, and that constant is just going to stay just like that. Um, even if this were a negative board out in front, it would still be the opposite of 4 over x to the negative 3. Uh, if I had uh, 27 a squared b to the negative 3 times c to the negative 5, Ooh, could we write that so it had all positive exponents? Sure. We can, we can take 27a squared. That already has positive exponents. The b, where does it go? Yeah, I see you guys pointing. I can't hear you pointing. Where does it go? Okay, denominator, yeah. So b to the third. And then we can move the c down. c to the fifth. Now, these two way, these, these two, these are both acceptable ways to write an answer to an expression or an equation or something. Um, this one, you notice all of the variables are in the numerator. See how they're all in the top of the fraction? And we're okay with that. Like, okay, no fractions. You guys like it when there's no fractions? Yeah? Okay. This is the other correct way we can write our answer. This way, we have no negative exponents, which is also good. Do you guys like negative exponents? No, they're kind of a pain, aren't they? Sometimes they're nice, and you'll see why, but uh, we, we often don't like them. So here we have it written with no negative exponents. Here we have it with all the variables in the numerator. So it's, sometimes it's pick your poison. Do you want to not have fractions, or do you want to not have negative exponents? We wish we could choose both of those things, but we can't always do that. So we have to be able to write it one way or the other. Um, okay, I'd like you to do one. Got a piece of paper? Let's practice this a little bit, what we've been talking about. <clears throat> Can you write that without the exponent? You done? Yeah. It's a one with how many three, uh, zeros? Three. <laughs> three zeros. There we go. Okay. How about this one? Can you write that without a negative exponent and then without any exponents? So write it so it doesn't have a negative exponent and then write it again without any exponent. So, Dane, did you write it without a, a negative exponent? One over what? Okay. We got that. Gracie, did you write it with, with no exponents on it? One over? Yeah, it's hard. At least you know you got seven zeros, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. Commas help. One over ten million? Pretty simple. We happy with that? Okay. Uh, let's try this. Let's try uh, 10 y to the negative 5. Can you write this expression so it doesn't have a negative exponent? 
Come on, write it so it doesn't have a negative exponent. Okay, you done? Shannon, what you got? There you go. No negative exponents. You all happy? Easy enough? Okay. Let's talk about graphing a little bit again. Um, how many points do we need in order to graph an equation? Three? Do we really need three? Ryan, how many? How many do we really need? Two. Gage is adamant. Two. We need two, right? And why do we usually make you guys find three? Yeah, you're not good at it yet, right? Just make sure they line up. Okay, so two. Let's 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 find two here at least. What do you want to do? Okay, put zero in. Put zero in for x. What comes out for y? And then I heard put four in. Good choice. That is a wonderful lazy choice. That way, what happens to our fours? See how they cross cancel and we just end up with one times one plus seven? Okay, so there's two points. Now, if we do a fourth point, we're going to do negative four because we can just change this to negative four. Instead of one, what does this one become? Negative one plus seven is? Okay, we grab our three points, we're good to go, right? We can, we've, we've got our equation or we've got our line, we can do it. What if, what if the equation is not in that form? What if it looks like this? Okay, can we still find two points on this line? Um, this one, this one is in what we call slope intercept form. Do you remember that from last year? Slope, intercept form, right? Y intercept form. This one is in what we call standard form. Standard form. So it looks like AX plus BY equals C. It's in this form. Uh, we still want to be able to graph it. Now there, there's a couple ways we can graph it. Uh, I won't tell you both of them, but I'm just, I'm just going to show you one way. And it looks really similar to what we've been doing. Now think lazy. What do you want to do first? Put zero in where x is. Okay? Two times zero plus six times y equals 18. Do you notice when you put zero in where x is, basically that term just disappears? See how it's just zero? Right? So 6y equals 18. What does y equal? Okay, there's a point. All right, we're halfway home. We gotta find one more point, don't we? Okay, how can we find that other point? Well, not only can we put a zero in where X is, guess what else we can do? We can put a zero where Y is. Now we don't do that when it's in this form. We always put numbers in for X and get numbers out for Y. But we can, we can find this way. So we can go, 2 times x plus 6 times y. We're going to put a 0 in there. And what happens again? What happens to this term? Yeah, it disappears. It, it doesn't matter anymore, does it? It's 0. So 2x equals 18. What does x equal? 9. So what we've done is we found the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept? 3, or 0, 3. And what is the x-intercept? 9, 0. And both those things are important. We all, we, sometimes we talk about the y-intercept more, but the x-intercept, when we start looking at more realistic problems, is, is just as, if not more, important. So, there you go. That's called the double-intercept method. Okay? We find two points by putting the zeros and figuring out what comes out. We graph those two points. There's our line. Okay? Now, we're only doing two points, so what happens if you make a mistake on one of these two? You're just out of luck, aren't you? 
Okay, you've got to be really careful about doing this. So what I'd like you to do is just find a couple of intercepts for me. So I'm going to give you a, an equation in standard form. 4x subtract 2y equals 12. Okay, and I want you to use this double intercept method to find two points on that line for me. Okay, um, Georgia, what did you do first? Say, say it louder. Okay, well, just to start, are you gonna put you're gonna put a zero in, right? And where did you put it in first? Next to the four, so you put it in for x, right? So, Georgia said put a zero in where x is. You guys okay with that? Okay. What happens to this 4x term? So, we, it's gone. So, zero minus 2y is just negative 2y. What does y equal then? Negative 6. Oh, you had me with negative. Awesome. Okay. All right, we're halfway there, right? Okay. Mikai, what do you want to do next? Put a zero where y is. Yeah. So 4x subtract 2 times 0 equals 12. And this term? Gone? What does x equal? 3. So we've got 0, negative 6. So we could graph this quickly. Let's see. When you guys when you guys graph something, I want you to use a straight edge if you have to draw your own graph. Put arrows on the ends of your lines here, your axes, and then label the axes for me at least, okay? You don't have to make 10 little marks in each direction. I just make the marks that I need. So if I have to graph 0, negative 6, that's right there. We call this the y-intercept. Can you see? Why do we call it the y-intercept? That's where it hits the y-axis. And then 3, 0, we call that the x-intercept. There you go. And there's our equation. We only need the two lines, or the two points, excuse me. Notice I made it nice and long, put arrows on the end, because it doesn't end, does it? Okay? And that's how we graph it. Feel okay about this? Some of that's new, some of it not so new. Uh, there is an Alex assignment for you to do. Let's get going.